I've been watching this for just 20, 30 years now, and, and it's not there, and I don't see it on the horizon. Mm -hmm. Hello and welcome to another one of our Ask the Expert videos here at Boat How To. I'm Jan Attenstedt. And I'm uh, Nigel Calder. And uh, today we want to talk about fuel cells. Of course, with all this renewable energy and new ways to store energies, that actually sounds kind of interesting. So what's your take on fuel cells on boats, Nigel? No. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty clear. <laughs> um, I've actually been on the fringes of several fuel cell projects in which uh, tens of millions of dollars have been invested. Mm -hmm. um, the, the problem is the typical fuel cell you put on a boat needs hydrogen. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are uh, uh, other fuel sources. Um, and then, so we have no hydrogen storage capabilities on boats. Mm -hmm. So then we end up using some hydrocarbon mm -hmm. that we can crack like to get uh, hydrogen. Methane. Methanol, uh, methanol. is the, mm -hmm. the more common one, a, a very clean purified version of mm -hmm. methanol. And then we can crack it to get the hydrogen out of it. Uh, and then uh, we can use that to power the fuel cell. So. By the time you've done that, you discovered that the efficiency. Uh, well, let's, let me say the most popular little fuel cell, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm sure annoy a number of people here. Um, in the boat and RV world, comes from Efoy. They've sold tens of thousands of these. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful piece of kit. But if you look at the cost of the methanol mm -hmm. and the amount of electricity you get out of that Efoy fuel cell over the life of the fuel cell before mm -hmm. the fuel cell itself needs uh, reconditioning or replacing, uh, you're probably paying. 10 to 20 dollars a kilowatt hour for electricity and that's the same electricity you buy at home you know for i don't know 20 cents i don't know so what it is in europe factor of 100 pretty much yeah, yeah. And, and not only that if you look at the uh the conversion ratio of methanol into electricity mm -hmm. uh you get about uh, one third of the electricity per mm -hmm. liter of mm -hmm. Fuel and it is a hydrocarbon mm -hmm. methanol compared to uh, diesel. Compared to a, a well operating, you know, the diesel mm -hmm. generator. Mm -hmm. Or if you've got an alternator on your main engine and you're underway, actually, that's the most efficient way we can use a hydrocarbon on a boat to generate electricity mm -hmm. is to do it with an alternator when we're underway, not at anchor. If we try to generate at anchor, it's chronically inefficient. But mm -hmm. uh, if you look at that uh, conversion ratio of the hydrocarbon into electricity, it's way below that of, of a, of a well-optimized mm -hmm. AC generator. So it doesn't pencil out from an environmental point of view, and it doesn't pencil out from a cost point of view. Mm -hmm. um, and I keep hoping uh, we'll get improved technology, but I've been watching this for just 20, 30 years mm -hmm. now, and, and it's not there, and I don't see it on the horizon. Mm -hmm. It's a bummer because it sounds yeah. pretty much too good to be true, right? Yep. Clean, yeah. uh, clean energy. Yeah. Really. And even if we had a shoreside hydrogen supply, which mm -hmm. we obviously don't, uh, we'd then need to have cylinders on the boat that could tolerate thousands of pounds of pressure. I mean, mm -hmm. you, because you can't liquefy, liquefy hydrogen except at very high pressures and low mm -hmm. temperatures, uh, we're driven to very high pressure storage. Mm -hmm. And as you know, hydrogen is very flammable. Mm -hmm. uh, you need a whole different system on the boat, which we don't have, mm -hmm. which is why they're using methanol. And the one project I was involved with, um, they thought they discovered how to crack diesel oh, to get oh. hydrogen. So then you've got a single fuel on the boat. You have mm -hmm. the diesel engine and you use the diesel to run the fuel cell. Mm -hmm. uh, and they invested $60 million. Um, they put up a, mm -hmm. they created a production line. They thought they had this cracked. And then they discovered that some of the trace impurities that you find in diesel wreck the fuel cells mm. and uh, their process didn't clean them out. Mm -hmm. uh, and they had to abandon the project uh, after $60 million, he pulled the plug on it. Ah, bummer, because I mean, that would have been a game changer. Yeah, well, and another one I was involved with, where mm -hmm. they probably spent $20 million, mm -hmm. was using propane as the mm -hmm. source. Well, right? which is also something most people or many people have right. on their boats. And again, they got to the point where they were testing prior to going to market, they thought they had all of this figured mm -hmm. out. And they discovered impurities in the propane that you get in the marketplace because they were buying mm -hmm. purified uh, lab quality propane mm -hmm. for their testing prior to that. They discovered these impurities wrecked the fuel cells and they had to pull the plug on that project. Bummer. Yep. Really a bummer. And I saw one where they were trying to hydrolyze seawater. Well, I mean, you need electricity for well, that. Well, they were using solar and wind. Uh -huh. uh, it kind of looked like it worked. Uh -huh. And uh, that actually got a ton of investment from the uh, 
American government and, and even the head of that project got invited to go to the White House and meet Obama. And they discovered they had, a, in one of their early calculations, they had a decimal point in the wrong place. Oh, <laughs> so it was not yeah. as efficient oh, as no, efficient that, as That one, I believe they spent more than $100,000 on that before they discovered the decimal point was in the wrong place. Bummer. <laughs> really a bummer, but yeah, right. yeah, I mean, that leaves us with basically, I mean, what's the best way? I think solar is probably um, yeah. if you, if good you, batteries and solar panels as, as much as you can yeah. fit on your boat is probably. The, yeah. Unfortunately, there's no way to have extended propulsion on a boat without having a hydrocarbon fuel mm -hmm. at the moment. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it uh, in the future, maybe we'll get good enough batteries to where we can do it. Um, with with batteries and shore power, but mm -hmm. but even so, for a, for a cruising boat that wants to go offshore and stay offshore for for weeks or months, uh, there is no substitute right now for diesel. Yeah, yeah. and it's not what I want to say, but that's yeah. Well, I mean, you got to face reality. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, all right. Well, that was some interesting insights, Nigel. Mm -hmm. So if you want to learn more about how to generate energy on boats, how to store it and uh, everything that goes with it, check out our electrics courses at boathowto.com. We have uh, the Boat Electrics 101 course, which covers the basics of DC systems and where we talk a lot about batteries. And then we have the advanced marine electrics, where we go more into yeah, advanced technology. But with Boat Electrics 101, we also have a big bonus lesson where we talk about solar and wind power. And well, briefly mention fuel cells, but you now know why we don't go right. into into more details on yep. those. Anyways, one day, yeah, one day maybe. Yeah, but let's hope. I, I don't see it uh, mm -hmm. any not in the next few years. Mm -hmm. That's for sure. Yeah, hopefully we get there sometime. All right, <laughs> see you soon.